Good morning and God bless you. We're delighted to have you with us here this morning. Maybe this is your first time joining us. We want to extend a warm welcome to you and trust that you're blessed with what you hear today. We want to begin with prayer. We want to pray for our nation, our local community and region, uh, Cornerstone Pentecostal Church and our brothers and sisters around the world. Perhaps you have a special unspoken request. It's a perfect time to make that known unto God. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. We praise you. We worship you. God, we thank you for the abundance of all things. Father, we pray for this nation. We pray for the influence of the word of God, the spirit of God, and the people of God upon the very direction of our country. Father, we also pray for our local region and community here and pray that you'll continue to open great doors for the church here locally. We pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church and pray that you'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out your virtue upon your people. And lastly, we remember our brothers and sisters around the world and pray that you build a hedge of protection around them. We ask all this in the name above every name, the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said, amen. Well, I have a thought. <clears throat> and I'd like to go to 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verses 11 and 12. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Fight the good fight of faith. You're going to have to fight to stay free. That is just the bottom line. And we have to be careful that we're not, it's not just that we're fighting, but it's that we're fighting the right war. And so I want to just entitle this this morning, Fighting for Freedom. Fighting for Freedom. I was listening to um, a radio program earlier this morning and I get up in the wee hours and was already moving around. And when I pulled out of the garage, it was dark out and the radio was on uh, to talk radio. And I was listening to a man that was talking about the progress of our nation and where our nation is today and how that if America today is going to experience um, any level of freedoms and to hold on to the freedoms that we've all come to know and love and become acclimated to, that we are going to have to fight. And um, to the unsuspecting listener, it, it might have appeared negative, but I was in absolute and total agreement with um, with the commentary that was being offered on the radio. But here's the key. The key is, um, as apostolic people of God, is to know how to fight. And I want to tell you that we can do far more on our knees than we can waving a banner or um, somebody shoving a camera in our face and us making anti-government remarks and, and, and all that. Um, whether ha that has its place at all for the people of God, I'll leave that, I'll leave that answer to other people. But I know that when a child of God wars, when a child of God goes to battle, it is a battle that is done on our knees. It is done in devotions. It is done through our consecration. And it is just done, brothers and sisters, with a made-up mind. I do not believe that we should become entangled 
with the affairs of this life that we can please him that has called us to be good soldiers. And so I believe that we have to we have to keep we have to keep our spiritual senses about us and understand that the very first freedom that I am interested in is our freedom in the spirit and recognizing that we are not going to be given to the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye and the pride of life and the encroachment of the world and the influences, uh, the insane influences that are bombarding the American public. The Church of the Living God has a greater resource. We have greater weaponry, but our weaponry is designed for this first level of freedom. And that is our spiritual freedom, the freedom that we have spiritually. And that happens by just being consecrated and being dedicated and having a consistent prayer life. Because make no mistake about it, the enemy wants your freedom. He wants your freedom. As I look at the nation of Israel, and I see that how God brought them out, and within a short amount of time, they were already calling for a king. Instead of the beautiful theocracy, God providing uh, a spiritual leader in the person of, of Moses or, or Joshua, and then God providing himself uh, a priest that would re represent the people before God, and then a prophet that would represent uh, from God to the people. The, the theocratic, theocratic balance that God put into place with his men so that people could have a direct line uh, to their invisible yet very present king. But people said, we want a king like the other nations. And this was the beginning of the end of the liberty and the freedom that I believe was promised to them by being under theocratic government instead of having uh, a physical king. And then you can just, the short, uh, the history that's revealed to us in the Old Testament that shows how that they went into, they went back into captivity, Babylonian captivity, and then things were never quite the same. My brothers and my sisters, this liberty that we have is worth fighting for. And so when we talk about, um, um, and I would, like I was saying, I was listening to this radio program this morning and like our voices need to be heard and we need to be out there and we need to be doing whatever it takes, yada, 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 yada. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to stay on my knees and pray for the absolute perfect will of God. I believe that God is in control. But I cannot influence anything else if I myself am not spiritually free. I have to be I have to be absolutely liberated by the power of God, by the word of God in my life, following after the precepts of the word of God in my life, enjoying my freedom. And then my prayers can influence different freedoms beyond that. But I want to tell you, there are some things that you have to fight for. You cannot be lazy about this. You cannot be, you cannot put this fight off. When the fight comes to you, you have to be willing and ready to pull out your sword and you have to go to war. And the Bible says, fight the good fight of faith, which means it is under attack. It, uh, when, I, when I talk to denominational people, and if you're listening to this today and maybe you have a denominational background, I mean no disrespect or uh, offense at all, but I'm just, ta I'm just telling you that their freedoms are not like our freedoms. When you talk about the baptism of the Holy Ghost and walking in the Spirit and enjoying the presence of God and, and, and the beauty and, the, and the, the symmetry that comes of worshiping God with God's people, those are things I'm not willing to give up. We're not going to give up old we're not going to give up old-fashioned worship, running the aisles, worshiping God with demonstration, with, with speaking in tongues. We're not going to give up any of that. We are not going to give up who we are. We're not going to give up how we worship. We're not going to give up our lifestyle. We're not going to give up our doctrine. We're not giving up anything. 
And these are the things that are worth fighting for. And if you don't keep a perimeter, a demilitarized zone where there is a perimeter, a boundary, then the enemy will come in any way, any place that he can. And so some things are just worth fighting for. As I was listening to this um, this commentary uh, this morning, um, I thought of all of the American lives that have been sacrificed to keep our freedoms and our liberty, but yet we're in a generation that doesn't know anything about warfare, about fighting for liberty, um, and upholding the banner of of liberty for all and the pursuit of happiness. I want to tell you, when you when a generation arises that knows nothing about warfare and battle and fighting for freedom, not only is our nation in trouble, but the church of the living God is in trouble. Think about it. God bless you all. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning.